Okay, this is episode four. I, oh, oh my God, the bees like literally were cutting off oxygen. Anyway, y'all. Okay, so the fact that Brian Peck's side was full in the court. First of all, I feel like his mom was wrong for that because it's like, you should have at least had the dad there too. So he could have maybe just punched Brian right in the nose. But anyway, the fact that his side was full just lets me know how sick Holly Weird is. Like to support somebody that it's literally all the facts is there and y'all just like, oh, well, nah, nah, nah. anyways, the fact that he only got 16 months really triggered me as well. Like, ew. Um... But he had to register as an offender, but he still got to work it, at Disney. Anyway, here are some letters of support. The first one is James Marsden. He said, I assure you, and I'm going to put their pictures up too because they should feel shame. I assure you what Brian's been through the last year is a suffering of 100 men. He's known Peck for 14 years. And just because someone didn't do something to you does not mean that he is an innocent person. And I don't care how much he suffered because he hurt a child. Moving on. Taryn Killam. He said in his letter, the effects, the effects the situation had on Brian, and I know for a fact that he regrets the mistakes he made. But again, what are they not understanding? Who cares about his pain when you assaulted a child? Alan Thick. I don't know if this Robin Thick daddy, but if it is, he should feel shame and Robin, you should be ashamed too. Anyways, because he was never inappropriate to me in any way. Again, he may not have been appropriate to you, but that doesn't mean that he's a good person. Oh, my God. Brian. Oh, sorry. So this is Thomas DeSanto. He says, Brian is ashamed and remorseful about his lapse of judgment. That was the X-Men producer. Hell. Anyways, sincerely, Ron Melendez. Brian is a good man. Okay, Boy Meets World's actor, Ryder Strong. Ryder Strong, he said, impossible for me to comprehend. He wrote a letter. I don't know what else was said. Will Friddle, also from Boy Meets World. There's no malice in his heart. And he also stated there was a plethora of letters. Oh, no, the lady stated, sorry. There was a plethora of letters stating that that Brian Peck must have been tempted. A 15-year-old tempted a 40-year-old man, which didn't happen. That's not the truth. <sighs> Disappointing Joanna Kearns. She tried to retract her statement, but I don't care. Joanna Kearns, I can't believe that there must have been some extreme situation or temptation exerted upon him to influence his actions, blaming the victim. She retracted her statement by saying, I have now learned that the letter of my support was based on a complete misinformation. What could be misinformation if he was a predator and he, he, he harmed somebody and you blamed the 15 year old? You're a trash person and you you deserve nothing. And then there's this girl with the bad bangs, Kimmy, Kimmy Robinson. I believe with all my heart that Brian was pressured and pushed beyond belief and he caved. I hope somebody hexed you. Um, director Rich Carell, as well as Beth Carell, stage manager. Rich said, it would be my pleasure to work with him again. Brian Peck does en end up working with kids again on Disney, Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. It showed up and it was enough protection it, he showed up and it just shows the lack of protection for children. The Carell stated that they had put, they had no input or involvement in casting Brian Peck on the Disney show. They said they asked him about the case and Mr. Peck simply replied, that's problem has been resolved. So instead of looking into his court files, you believe Brian Peck. When he's, he's obviously assaulted children, went to jail for assaulting children, but you still allowed him around children. Despicable. Despicable. Anyways, then moving forward, Brian Peck deserves nothing. And if you see him in a street, y'all, y'all know what to do. Haha, <laughs> kidding. Not kidding. Anyways. Now, they go back into detail about Dan Schneider. He produced Zoe 101, as well as Victorious and iCarly that had more inappropriate jokes. And they were wearing like skinny, like, you know, more skimpy stuff that made them kind of, 
He you was know, trying to adultify teenage, young adolescent girls. Teenage people that, I mean, adults could see kind of. And Alexis, who was on that show, stated like, I wouldn't really wear stuff like that. So who was they? who were they appealing to? Obviously, right? Even with some of the jokes with like, you know, nuts and the feet and the all the rest of it. If you go back, you'll see them. Yeah, very inappropriate. The sensual jokes about the shots again with Jamie on Jamie Lynn's face. You know, um, just a plethora of inappropriate things also in this documentary i found it so weird when dan schneider stated and you can look it up on tiktok because it's there you can look it up on youtube he states i can he's like i love when the cast gets sassy with me because i can treat them however i would like to oh really <laughs> baby he is going to hell um he's like, i could put them in bad any bad predicament that i and he knew that he had that power at that moment and by this time dan schneider was a nasty man i mean he's probably been nasty like i mean someone who could just be cool and then uh, obtain power and more money and just become that person he was always that person it just it didn't need that much convincing so he ended up going on a power trip even when there was a saint jude uh charity he says about the victorious cast as well as like some other people that were in other casts you can ask them anything you can be inappropriate ask them inappropriate questions blah, 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 blah. and i'm just like hmm that's interesting there is a appreciation space now uh for jerry trainer good for you jerry let's give jerry a round of applause um you can see a lot of videos where jerry was on set when he wasn't working um, we call him Spencer from iCarly, um, just to intervene because he knew, because he was an adult. He was basically the only adult on that show besides like Freddie's mom, you know? Okay, now we're going to talk about Jeanette McCurdy. So I guess when it was the awards and, you know, she wasn't present also in the awards, why did everybody look like inebriated? Like everybody looked like they were just not there. And I remember um, Evan, we call him Beck from Victoria's, just to be like, I was never sober. He said that, I remember that. He said, when I was on Victoria's, I was never sober. And I was just like, hmm, why did you have to be drunk? To tolerate Dan Schneider, probably. Also, he's writing a book. That's what he said. That's what he said. So I hope that we get, we get, we get a little something, something in that book as well, because we got a lot in Jeanette McCurdy's book. Um, she basically said in her book that I feel like the creator has two distinct sides. One is generous and over complimentary and the other is just, just overbearing. And if we go back to episode one, Jenny, who was a writer on the Amanda show said the same thing. She always felt like, oh, he's great. He's going to be good today. And then he just turned into a demon. Not everybody's lying. Because even in the documentary, it did say, like, Dan denied this. Dan denied that. I'm like, not everybody lying on you, Dan. We're going to say allegedly. But not everybody lying on you, Dan. Okay. You know? Now, during the end, Drake is going to come back on episode five. He basically says that he was in and out of being sober. Um, he went bankrupt. He did have DUIs. He did have child endangerment for texting a minor, but not physically talking to her. They said that the minor did lie about their age in the court cases. However, that's not an excuse, right? We're not making excuses for predatory behavior. We're not. We're not. Not on this channel. He pleaded guilty. He had 200 hours probation and community service. That was blown, that, that actually, that story was blown up besides him getting a DUI. He also like, I think crashed to like Josh Peck's party. Like he was out of control because he was, all, he was inebriated. He, he was on drugs. You know what I mean? He wasn't sober and he tried to unalive himself. Then he got the help that he needed and continuously by getting back in contact with his dad uh, going to a rehab and getting himself together. Now, I know that there's more to this story for Drake because he's going to be on episode five, which I'm super excited about seeing. And I'm glad that you guys like got this breakdown. <sighs> However, it was long and winded, y'all. So I hope that you guys appreciated it and you will get a long drawn out 
uh, episode five, you know, breakdown as well. Um, like, comment, share, and share your opinions. Run it up to the top so I'm able to be monetized. I really got I do appreciate you guys. And again, like, comment, and subscribe. And bye.